Welcome back to another video with me coding through the Rustlings tutorial. This time we will be talking about structs in Rust. And if this is the first time you're seeing one of these videos, make sure to check out the playlist linked in the description. And let's get started right away. So I've already executed Rustlings Watch in the Rustlings repository. And we see here that we have a bunch of new compiler errors. These are happening in structs1.rs. And let's see if we can get some hints this time. So I'm typing hint. Okay, so Rust has more than one type of struct, three actually. All variants are used to package related data together. There are normal or classic structs. These are named collections of related data stored in fields. There are tuple structs. Those are basically just named tuples. And finally, there are unit structs. These don't have any fields and they're just useful for generics. We will talk about what generics are in another video. In this exercise, you need to complete and implement one of each kind. Read more about structs in the book linked here. Okay, so let's just open up the file. Uh, it's in exercises structs, structs1.rs. Okay, and here we can see that there is a color classic struct. So this is a classic struct apparently. And then we have a tuple struct and then there is a unit struct. And we can also see that there's some to-dos commented here. So there's some stuff that we need to do. And down here we have a bunch of tests as usual that verify that our code is working. And we can also see that we have to do some work inside of the tests to make this code compile. Okay, so I would say we just start at looking at the tests so that we get a better idea what we need to do. So the first test, which is testing the classic struct, we see that there's a bunch of assertions here, namely one that is checking whether green.name equals a certain string and whether green.hex equals a certain string. So that means green is most likely a struct, in this case is gonna be our classic struct, that has a name field and a hex field, and they're both of type string. So let me open up the same file in another buffer here so we can see them side by side. Okay, so here we have our color classic struct. And to make this first test work, we need to add a name field of type string and a hex field also of type string. And once that is done, we can go here back to the test and create that struct using the color classic struct name and the curly braces. And then we pass values to each of these fields. So in this case, name is gonna be green to string and hex is gonna be the hex mentioned in the test dot two string. Now there's a reason that we have to call two string on these two strings. So you might wonder why is that? Um, the reason is that a simple string as we can see it right here is actually a string slice and not a string type. These are two different things in Rust. And I'm gonna talk about these in another video, but for now just take it as it is, except that in order to get a string, we have to call either two string on a string slice or another variation would be to call string from and then pass down the string slice here. Okay, so then next up we have a tuple struct that we need to test. And we see here that in the test for the tuple struct, the green struct is being dot into with indices. So zero and one, just like you can access properties or values in normal tuples as well. And here on the right hand side, we, we can see the color tuple struct, which is created just like normal tuples, just that it has an actual name. So I'm gonna remove the comment here and then say that the first value in this tuple struct is a string and the second one is a string as well, which are representing the field's name and hex respectively. And then to instantiate that tuple struct, all we really have to do is use the color tuple, st tuple struct name and give it the values green to string and the hex mentioned in the test to string. And that should do the trick. Then next up, we have a unit struct test. And unit structs are very special because they don't really have any fields in there. They're really just types that can be used for generics. I'm gonna talk about generics in another video. And when we look 
at the test, we can see that there is an assertion that says a message has to be equal to unit structs are fun. And then there is a message defined here, which is a formatted string that has a placeholder that will be replaced with whatever values passed to format here. Now you might be wondering what's up with this colon question mark syntax. This is a symbol that specifies that the placeholder has to format the debug output of the given value or the given type that the value is. And in this particular case, we can see here on the right-hand side on line 13 that the unit struct derives the debug trade. And this is what tells Rust how this particular value, how this type is represented in a formatted string when the debug placeholder is used. I'll be creating another video about traits and the debug trade specifically. So to make this test pass, all we have to do is say that unit struct is a unit struct and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna save the file and see what's happening here. Okay, cool, this is compiling. We can head off to the next one. I'm gonna remove the comment up here and also close this buffer because we don't need this anymore. And then see what the compiler is saying. Obviously there's another failing exercise this time, structs2.rs. Let me see what Rustlings is telling us this time. So the hint says creating instances of structs is easy. All you need to do is assign some values to its fields. There is however, some shortcuts that can be taken when instantiating structs. Have a look in the book. Okay. Um, Let's just take a look at the file and see what's going on there. So I'm going to open up structs2.rs and here we can see we have a struct order with different fields of different types. And then there is a function create order template. It seems to be a somewhat factory function because it's creating order values for us. And then we have a test down here where we create an order template. And then there's a to do that says create your own order using the update syntax and template above. Okay, so what we need to do here is creating our own order that makes this test here pass. And the way we have to create it is using the so-called update syntax. Now, what this means is that there's, as mentioned earlier, different ways to create a struct. One we can see here where we just use the struct type in itself and then assign each field a value. Now the update syntax is very similar, but when we use that one, we actually reuse an existing struct to create our own one. So when we want to create our own order here, we can say let order, and then we say our order is an order, and the name has to be the string hacker in Rust to string. And we can see that all the other fields here, except for order count, are the same as the one in order template. So we can say that the count here is one and all of the other fields can be taken from the order template. And we can do that by using this dot dot syntax. This is the update syntax that this exercise is referring to. So let's uh, save this and see if this is working. Oh, I forgot to add a semicolon here at the very end. And I also forgot to put a comma here. So let's save this and see if this is compiling. Okay, cool. So that was this one. I'm gonna remove the comments and head off to the next exercise. Okay, so structs three, asking for a hint right away. This one says the new method needs to panic if the wait is physically impossible. How do we do that in Rust? For is international, what makes a package international? Seems related to the places it goes through, right? For calculate transport fees, bigger is more expensive usually. We don't have size, but something may fit the bill here. Have a look in the book to find out more about method implementations. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll up here really quick just to get a just to get an idea what's going on. So there's some parsing errors here and some syntax errors. Um all right, let's take a look at the file itself. So I'm going to open up structs3.rs. Okay, and here we can see we have a package with a bunch of fields, sender country, recipient country, and weight in grams, and it's deriving the debug trait. Here we then see there's an implementation block for package. This is how you add methods to structs. 
structs are not just structures with fields you can actually add logic to them and this is done with methods and we can add methods by creating an implementation block and then putting functions in there so here we see there's a new function that lets us create a new package value and then there is two functions here is international and get fees and obviously these need to be implemented apparently and then there's a bunch of tests down here that verify that the code is working as expected so let's see what the first test is saying the first test says fail creating waitlist package so when sender country is Spain and receiving country is Austria, and when we create a package with a weight that is negative, then this program here should panic. So I'm gonna open up the same file in another buffer here so we can see it side by side up here. Okay, so we have the package struct which has weight in grams, and that is also the third parameter that's passed to the new function that's used here in the test so when this one is negative it should panic and if we take a look at the implementation of this function we can see that here we're already checking whether weight in grams is smaller or equals to zero then we should panic here i need to check how panics are done again in rust so let me open up a browser really quick Okay, so here we can see panic is a macro that we can call just like that. So I'm going to do that now, putting a panic in here. Okay, then the next test, it says create international package. Again, we have a center country, Spain, and a recipient country, Russia. And we create a package this time with a positive weight. So this is not going to panic. And then we check whether the package is indeed international. Now we know that a package is international when the sender country and the recipient country are not the same. So I assume that here on the right hand side in the function is international. We first of all say that it is returning the bool type and then we return self dot sender country equals self dot recipient country. Then the last test says calculate transport fees. So here we have a sender country Spain and the same country is used as the recipient country. Then cents per gram is unknown at this point. And then we create a package with its weight. And here we have an assertion that checks whether the fees are equals to 4,500. So given that the weight in gram is 1,500 and the assertion expects the fees to be 4,500. It looks like cents per gram has to be three. And then the function get fees looks like it has to return cents per gram multiplied by self dot weight in grams. And then this is gonna return an I32 and that should make the test pass. So let's save the file and see if that's doing the trick. Okay, so we have a failing test here and the failing test is in create international package. Let's take a look here and uh, let's see. So we have our two countries here and in the function we're checking whether they're the same. And this is not correct because it is only international when they're not the same. So that was a logical error here. Let's make this not equals to and save the file again. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. This is compiling. Sorry for that little bug there. And that's it with all of the exercises about structs in the wrestling tutorial. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out the other videos as well. See you around.